All right. If you've been using uh, perspective before, um, you'll notice that especially that every perspective, one point, two point, three point, they all have their limitations and their uses. Um, so let's look at the limit of one point perspective where it starts to look really strange. Um, and that's going to happen when you have um, an object uh, that's really far away from our vanishing point. Um, so let's say we were drawing that um, another rectangular solid. And we're going to do the, use the same approach. We're going to draw the rectangle and draw our parallel lines to the horizon. Then we're going to drop our uh, our receding lines all the way over to the vanishing point. Tricky without a ruler. Don't worry about it. So now we've got our four receding planes and our front plane. Um, and then we're going to do exactly what we did before. We're going to make our planes connect back. All right. So we've drawn this sort of rushing rectangular solid, but I don't know if you noticed this, but these front and back planes, these two planes start to look a little strange because these lines are still paralleling the horizon line. Um, so that kind of creates a distortion in our solid. This is a distortion that you can take advantage of if you'd like. Um, uh, I think it's kind of kind of fascinating when perspective gets uh, gets distorted. So um, the sort of solution to make this look a little more natural, as it were, is to use a second vanishing point. And what we're going to do, instead of having uh, half of our um, horizontals be parallel to the horizon line, and the other half going to a vanishing point. We're going to take all of our uh, so-called horizontals and make them recede to vanishing points, um, and so that's going to help help these make help these look a little more natural. And the way that works is um, if you have a vertical line, what's going to happen is one plane is going to recede to one vanishing point and the other is going, to is going to receive to the other vanishing point. So let's see what that does to our, does to our drawing. Okay. And then we're going to do that not just for this, we're going to do it for this plane too. Drop it all the way back. Okay, so now front of our solid is no longer parallel and perpendicular to the horizon line. It's actually receding back to the horizon line, which gives us a more naturalistic feel. And you'll see this in photographs a good bit. Okay, So now our object recedes in both directions. And that's a simple reason to use two-point perspective or to use one point perspective and have it remain distorted. So if we were to clean this up and uh, and draw a little par a little parallel version, we would have these receding like so. So our solid would look like that. It's pretty simple. And then you'll notice this also is going to receive back the horizon line. If we were to really 
draw through the form properly. So that's it. The limits of one-point perspective and why you should begin to use two-point perspective.